Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Hafsa Bello. I am a wife and mother of three kids. I am also a certified speaker, trainer, and coach. I am so excited to be here this evening on the Um Fariha. 30 women, 30 days of Ramadan take over. I am honored to be here because this year's lineup is that of phenomenal women and I am honored to be one of them. Thank you so much everyone for joining. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. So today we would be talking on how to maximize your day in Ramadan under the theme of time management and productivity in Ramadan. Usually Ramadan comes at a time in our lives where we are so busy with life, work, business and school. And it is usually difficult for us to balance between our ibadah and uh, our worldly life. But this year our Ramadan is a little bit different. With the pandemic going on, the whole world is almost um, almost the whole world is in lockdown. Yeah, almost everyone is at home. So this is a gift to us because most of us are less busy, especially those of us that um, were working or had businesses that had to shut down during this time. We now have a lot of time on our hands. We have enough time to prioritize and schedule our day such that we can make the best of this month. Alhamdulillah, we have reached the last 10 days. We all know how blessed this last 10 days and last 10 nights are. We all know about uh, the blessed night of Laylatul Qadr, which is in the last 10 days. So, I mean last 10 nights. So, how do we maximize our day to make it more productive and uh, ultimately get more rewards in this especially last 10 days? That is what we will be talking about. First and foremost, you need to prepare for your day a night before. If you had watched the previous stories, I made mention of that. At night, you need to uh, sit down and reflect on your day. How did my day go? Did I achieve the goals I set out to achieve? Uh, was I able to tick off all the things on my to-do list? Was it easy? How can I be uh, better or how can I do better in the coming days? That's the first thing you need to do. Reflect on the day. The next thing is uh, to create a to-do list. In doing that, you need to first and foremost set out your goals for the day. Yes, at the beginning of Ramadan, everyone has set goals to achieve by the end of Ramadan. But there is something about setting goals. When you break them down into smaller goals, now for Ramadan, it's a whole month. If you break them down into weekly goals and daily goals, you're sure to, inshallah, smash them. So you should have daily goals. So in setting your to-do list, the first thing you need to do is, what are my goals for the day? Okay, I have to read 20 pages of the Holy Quran. I have to read the meaning of at least 10 verses of the Holy Quran. I need to give charity. All those things ensure that you write them down. Then prioritize. The most important tasks go up on the list. Okay? Those tasks that take more of your energy, you ensure that you do them immediately after Sahur when energy is still high. 
because as the um, day goes on, we become a little bit dehydrated and maybe a little bit hungry and we're not able to concentrate very much on the most important things. So the first thing you do is do those important, important tasks at the beginning of the day immediately after Sahur. Now, the next thing you need to do the night before is to practice gratitude. Be grateful for all the things that happened um, during the day. Who made you smile? Who gave you a helping hand? What, uh, what thing are you grateful for? I have an app that I would recommend that I use every day, not even during Ramadan alone. And um, it's called Gratitude. That's just the name of the app. Every morning, uh, you have a prompt that asks you to write uh, the things you need to do. And then at the end of the day, you have prompts asking you the things you are grateful for. And one good thing about this prompt is, for example, one says, it doesn't just go, um, what are you grateful for today? No. One says, who made you smile? Who, uh, who helped you the most today? You know, it now triggers in your mind those things that you were actually great, grateful for during the day. There is another one that says, put up a picture that means a lot to you. It's possible during the day you took a picture of your cute kid and while taking that picture you had said alhamdulillah for uh, this lovely baby you know so in the gratitude app you can just put out that picture and say alhamdulillah i am grateful for my daughter or i am grateful for my family like um, one of the pictures i have of me my husband and my three kids which uh, means the whole world to me and when that prompt came up, I put out that picture and said, Alhamdulillah, for my family. So every day, practice gratitude before you go to bed. What that does is, it gives you um, a sense of fulfillment. It gives you, it, it, it helps you to relax. It helps you to uh, neutralize all the negativities. Because the uh, default of every human is to think of all the negatives. But with the gratitude uh, app or gratitude journaling, you get to be grateful for so many things and you feel happy, you feel relaxed, and it helps you to sleep better. You need to sleep well. You need to rest so that you can be productive the next day because if you're stressed you had a stressful night you didn't have a restful sleep you would not be able to be as productive as you wished and then you would not be able to smash all the goals you set for that day remember it is those daily goals that build up to the monthly goal that you have set out to achieve in Ramadan and then you make dua to Allah to help you achieve all of these goals because we are humans, we uh, have our own intentions, we have our goals set out, but ultimately it is Allah that makes all of this possible. So we have to call unto him to actually help us to achieve all of this. Okay, now um, the day has arrived, you, you started well, you had your sahur, which is very important. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that there is, you, you should try and have sahur because there is a blessing in it. There is a blessing in sahur. So try as much as possible, whatever it is. Even if it is a glass of water, don't say that I don't like taking sahur. Because having even uh, water alone would ensure that you are hydrated during the day. And of course, the blessings, the blessings are so, so important because we do not want to miss anything. We're talking about maximizing now everything because Ramadan, we are not sure that, that we're going to see the next um, Ramadan. 
it's it's a chance. I always see Ramadan as as a chance, like another chance at life. I always see Ramadan as a chance for us to repent and sometimes they say opportunities come but once we don't really know if we're going to see the next Ramadan. So just grab as much as possible, grab all the blessings, all the rewards. So have Sohur, then go ahead uh, to tick off the important things on your to-do list by doing the most important ones, the ones that need more of your energy. Now, if you have kids, or if you um, work from home or you homeschool them, you know, this is a time that you should probably take a break from homeschooling or online schooling since schools are, are closed. It's the last 10 days, so we need to utilize it. Take a break and then bring them on and tell them how important this last 10 days of Ramadan are. Of course, I know maybe we've been discussing about the, the Ramadan as a whole, but now the most important 10 days where all the rewards are just flowing, okay? Bring them on, tell them how important it is. I tried that with my kids, the, the 10 year old and the eight year old, and they were so excited and they want to really, really participate because who doesn't want rewards? They want to participate. So if you bring them on, you're on the same page with them, you have more time for yourself because they are also, you know, scrambling to get their rewards. They are doing their own acts of Ibadah, reading Quran, you know, give them their own shadows or let them even choose the times to do certain things. But make sure that they are at par with yours so that while they do that, they are there, you do yours also. Okay, then um, iftar, this is a time, as I said but previously, where we need to spend less time in the kitchen, more time doing our acts of ibadah. It's been 20 days in the holy month, alhamdulillah, most of us have been cooking, 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 and uh, some of us are even out of ideas, which is a good thing. Just cook the basics, the most important things you need for, for iftar. After all, you shouldn't fill up your stomach with so much food because it's the last 10 nights and everybody wants to be strong enough, agile enough to stand up in the middle of the night and get as much uh, part of the night as possible. So take uh, something light you can just break your iftar into two start with maybe dates and some milk something light then after maghrib you take something else doing that helps to curb your appetite you know that break break in transmission yeah okay it helps to curb your appetite so that you don't eat too much so you pray first after prayer then you come back and take some more so just ensure that you cook less and you eat less so that you'll be able to stand up at night to pray just before i started this video i um had a a video i someone sent me that video it's just a short video out of um I don't know if it's a tafsir or what, but it's just a short video that was talking about the uh, night of Laylatul Qadr where when you read Surah al Ikhla, you know, the amount of rewards you would get that would be multiplied by a thousand uh, months. He, the, the, uh, the malam in the a video was talking about the Prophet وسلم, saying that if anybody recites Surah Al Ikhlas 10 times at night, he would have built a house in Jannah. Now, think about reciting Surah Al Ikhlas 10 times during the night of Laylatul Qadr. How many houses would you have built 
in Jannah, inshallah. So sometimes it's just a matter of math. By the time you recite it 10 times, you have built one um, house. And then you multiply it by a thousand months. Oh, mashallah, may Allah make us to witness the night of Laylatul Qadr and be able to maximize um, the time we have in those nights. Yeah? So generally, uh, for the whole of the 10 days that we have, 9 to 10 days that we have uh, remaining in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, you should try as much as possible to minimize the use of social media. Yeah. Social media is good. It has its advantages. Like now in the month of Ramadan, you have access to valuable content. You have access to um, classes, online classes, online tab series, all that can be posted in your social media that you can uh, you wouldn't have known before if they had not been posted yeah you can also even post um, your own part maybe uh, some knowledge that would be useful for people which is like a sadaqa to jariah since they said knowledge which somebody else uses is sadaqa to jariah for the person that gives out that knowledge but then social media can be a time waster something that we do not need at this time something that we should run away from because yeah your your intention was to just go to that islamic page to get some information then next minute you see this post that catches your attention and you're like okay i'm just reading this post and i am off before you know it you keep scrolling mindlessly and then it's one hour or two hours that you should have used to read the Quran or read up on, on, on some hadith. So be mindful. Here are a few tips to help you. Your intentions for social media should be good from the beginning. I am going to use social media in Ramadan to post knowledgeable content for people so that it will be Sadaqa to Jariah for me. I am going to use social media to get access to tap series online or online classes or whatever beneficial thing that is going to help me in this month of Ramadan. Right? That's the first thing. Your intentions should be clean and pure. Secondly, you should schedule the use of social media. Say I am, for example, I'm going to use social media for only um, 25 to 30 minutes daily. No more, no less. In doing that, you can have, uh, you can use apps. There are apps out there that help you in uh, minimizing or scheduling your social media use. Okay, so search for those apps so that they can help you. Another thing is to use um, a timer so that as soon as the timer uh, runs out, whether you are done or not on social media, you have to run out too. That will help you to uh, concentrate on what took you there in the first instance. You know that I have to do the most important things first. If not, when the timer runs out, it means I am not doing the important things that would actually give me some rewards. So that is it on, um, on the use of uh, social media. Please, please be mindful and don't allow it to be a time waster. Another thing for the month of Ramadan, especially the last 10 days, is quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. Allah loves consistent acts. Allah loves consistency. No matter how little um, your acts of ibadah are, 
if you do them consistently, they are more lovable to Allah. Allah loves those acts more than the once in a while very big acts of ibadah that you do. So, try to uh, not be overwhelmed by the very big acts of ibadah. If you break them down, it's going to be more easy for you or it's going to be easier for you to do them more consistently. Let's take, for example, the Quran. Um, everybody wants to you know, recite the whole Quran during the month of Ramadan. We know all the blessings and the rewards that's in there. But how about um, concentrating on some parts of the Quran and then going deeper to learn the meaning, going deeper to understand the tafsir and you know having more understanding more because sometimes we just go on reading the Quran especially for those of us that are not native Arabic speakers we just read and don't know the meanings of everything so instead of having more um, surahs read how about understanding understanding the meaning that is quality then you can now build up gradually gradually you build up to you know even finishing everything now with a deeper meaning so you have more quality than quantity another one is um, acts of charity you can give acts of uh, you can give sadaqa in uh, ramadan daily which would help you to um, be consistent with that habit. It would become a habit. Instead of just giving out once in Ramadan a, a large chunk of um, um, either money or food, why not give daily? Because our daily habits, the things we do daily, become our long-term habits. So that will help you to be more consistent. So give, give, give every day in Ramadan. You'll find out that you would even want to give more continuously even after the month of Ramadan. Okay? And uh, the final tip now is how to keep the spirit of Ramadan alive. Yay, alhamdulillah. It was getting dark in here. It's almost time for um, iftar. So, um, I was saying how to keep the spirit of Ramadan alive, how to be uh, continuous, consistent with the acts of ibadah that you started or you kept doing in Ramadan. It all goes back to consistency. It all goes back to quality over quantity. You know? set the intentions that inshallah after ramadan i would want to continue these acts so that i can get more rewards right and then keep doing those things keep giving charity keep reciting the quran just ensure that you are not overwhelmed by taking too much uh, at a time just stay focused. Stay focused that this is what I want to do. And then as you keep doing them consistently, little by little, you see that you build up the momentum. You get the quality that you need. You also get the quantity that most of us crave because most people are about, um, are about quantity usually. So doing that would ensure that you keep the spirit of Ramadan alive. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. This brings us to the end of the talk on maximizing your day. I hope you all got some value. You can now ask your questions and inshallah I would answer them. All those that joined, thank you so much. So excited you can leave your comments leave your questions mashallah alhamdulillah thank you for the thumbs up and for the for the likes 
it's almost time for iftar iftar will be in exactly four minutes here as i said earlier i didn't have to be in the kitchen because i am home with the parents and all the cooking is done unless if i want to help out then i would do just that if you are like me and you have a lot of, a lot of time on your hands please 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 do not waste it just see that as a gift as a baraka from allah because uh it could have been different you could have been very busy you could have been in the middle of so much and you would not be able to um you would not be able to get the time you you have now so utilize it it's a chance it's a it's a chance that might not come again subhanallah Zainab said she joined late inshallah the video would be up in the Umu Fariha YouTube channel so you can always always watch that even if you joined in late thank you so much for having you I um, pray that Allah forgives me for any mistake that I make and I hope that he rewards us for the little that we have shared inshallah it is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu from me and bye for now